everyone, I'm Daisy Victoria, and welcome to a video about making an 1890s ballet costume inspired by Frozen. More specifically, Gale. You know, the wind spirit, the elemental. Um, this costume has been so far an adventure to make, and I suppose that is what I get for choosing a mischievous wind spirit as my character. Choosing a mischievous air elemental is kind of just asking for your costume to be mischievous. This thing has been to the timeout corner a couple of times. She has redeemed herself from the timeout corner, and I'm happy to say that so far it's going very well. I've been wanting to make an 1890s ballet fairy costume since last December when I went to see the Nutcracker. I was just so enamored by everything that I was like, Hmm, I want to do this, but like the OG Nutcracker, like from back in the day. So I looked into 1890s ballet costumes, and I was very pleased with what I found. Like the whole corset bodice top and the longer, more like petticoat type tutu. It's just really my style. Like, I love it, ballet or no. So I was like all about this. In fact, I actually thought that I would make a ballet fairy costume for some events that were going to happen this year, but as we all know, that is not going on. So those plans kind of just went out the window and I was like, well, I'll make it someday. I don't know when exactly, but well, I figured I'd figure it out. It turns out that some of my fellow costume buddies decided to do an 1890s Frozen group. I was like, yeah, I want in. I love it. I want to be part of it. So <laughs> I joined the group and I just wasn't really feeling any of the costume choices. I don't know why. You know, I thought I would see it and it would speak to me, but it just didn't speak to me. But okay, so I got to give two shout outs here. First shout out is to Rebecca, who is Lady Rebecca Fashions for kind of luring me into this group in the first place. And secondly, I got to give a shout out to Casey Birchfield because she kind of enabled me to go the route I'm actually going and to be Gail. So that's right. <laughs> I chose to not be any of the actual characters, but instead to be a wind spirit. And that was because I can become a humanized Gale and actually make the ballet fairy, or in this case, air elemental costume that is the costume of my dreams. Alright, so to get started on this costume, first of all I needed an idea. So I wasn't going after like copying one specific look or anything like that. I was going for my own design because I wanted it to look like the 1890s ballet costumes but not necessarily like be one of them. I mean it's a different character than those costumes anyway so. So I started out with a sketch. This is kind of a rough sketch here. So this is my version of Gale. It's gonna be a bodice with a skirt and I left it somewhat nebulous so I can fill in with details as I go. And then we have a little close-up of bodice shape, which I was using to kind of figure that out. Here I am cutting out the tool for my tutu. I'm using this off-white ivory tool and then I'm going to put a sparkle gold tool inside the layers as well. These are both tools that I had left over from other projects, so I basically just used everything I had left. And then I started sewing all the tool together so that I would have basically these big tubes that I could sew into my skirt. So 
some things about 1890s ballet costumes is that um, you may be familiar with modern ballet costumes nowadays a lot of the fancy ones will have like the big kind of flat pancake tutu that's not how it was back in the day so uh, obviously this changes over time um, 1890s specifically we're looking at longer tutus so they may be all the way down to the knee they may be a little bit shorter but we're dealing with lots of layers of tulle here and like really poofy but also longer. On top we are looking at corsets worn with like a close fitting bodice on top of them. These bodices kind of look like corset covers but you know like a cross between a corset cover and a bodice so that's kind of where I'm going with my bodice which you'll see in the next video by the way. In this video we're gonna make the tutu which you can see I've made actually so my tutu is many layers of tulle. I love it very much. Kind of want to wear it every day, except if only it fit through hallways, I kind of have to like push it, <laughs> smush it down to walk through my house. The tulle wrangling continues, as you can see here. Eventually when I have all my pieces sewn together, it's time to gather them. I'm just gathering, gather, 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 make that really huge tube into a waist-sized piece. <laughs> Oh no! So what you can kind of only see a little bit here is that my gathering thread broke. This actually happened to me twice in a row, and I was not too happy about it. In fact, the second time it happened is the one you're seeing here, and at that point I decided it was time for this project to go into the timeout corner. And thus Gail was sent to timeout. I intended to leave Gail in timeout until the next day because I was just done with her for the day. But after I had a snack and felt a little bit better, I decided it was time to bring her out of timeout. And as you can see here, I actually did finish gathering all the tutu parts that day. Basically, I just gathered a lot of tool. This is me gathering tool for ages and ages, but it's all in one day, so I guess they're really short ages. I combined a lot of the layers together so I wouldn't have to gather seven layers. I only had to gather two actual layers of gathering stitches. And then since I had those two layers, I did have to combine them together to make them into one single skirt. At this point, I was really happy with the volume and the overall look of the tutu. All it really needed, besides the embellishments later, was a waistband. I'm making the waistband out of some off-white ivory satin. It's actually the same I'll be making the bodice out of. And here I'm just trying to pin it onto the skirt. And I guess I say try because I ended up removing it and finding a better way to do it.
So here I am sewing it. Who needs a chair for sewing, am I right? You can just stand. I mean, look, the chair's already occupied by the tutu. You think I'm gonna compete for that space? Okay, so this time I'm really putting the waistband on and it's working out rather well. The waistband is actually drawstring, and here I'm inserting the drawstring. I did that on purpose because, well obviously I did it on purpose, right? But I chose to do the drawstring because that way I'll be able to adjust it slightly. You know, if I want to very slightly alter how high up it is on my waist, I can do that. It's not a problem. And I thought the drawstring would be the easiest way to get this big old pile of tool over my head and secure it very easily. So least amount of effort to greatest amount of payout. This is actually seven layers of tulle, and I've read that tutus could be up to like 12 layers. I was actually kind of concerned that I might need more tulle than what I had, but I used everything I had left of this like off-white ivory tulle and then the glitter gold tulle, and it turns out it's perfect. So seven layers was actually the perfect amount for this costume, which I really like. And I love how the sparkles are showing through, but they're not like in your face because I've actually made them underneath some other tool here. Also, I checked my mailbox and I got something in for my costume. They are point shoes. Now friends, do I know how to dance ballet on point? No. No, I do not. Will I be putting these on for photos so I can pose like the pictures, at least where they're not actually on point? Yes, yes I will. I actually have always wanted to do ballet and when I was little we didn't have the money to pay for ballet lessons. So that kind of dashed my dreams of being a professional ballerina. Since we've been in quarantine, I actually started looking up some basic ballet instruction on YouTube, thinking maybe I could learn just a little bit just to get some exercise in the house. And it's really fun. I haven't gone very far. Definitely haven't gone on point, but um, <laughs> hopefully some of the feet positions that I've been desperately trying to learn will help me in posing for photos in these cool point shoes. And maybe one day I'll get to the point where I can go on point. Don't know if that will happen. Most likely no, because I have like 9,000 hobbies. These are still really awesome and I actually feel really cool that I have them and I can put them on at least for the photos. Another thing about these costumes is that they're typically decorated with lots of fancy stuff. Now in Frozen 2, Gale is an air elemental, she's sort of based on sylphs from mythology, and she's represented by leaves, so fall colored leaves blowing around, 
Um, I have got a bunch of <laughs> such leaves, which I will be attaching to my costume. And the reason you're not going to see that right now behind me is because I need to make the bodice first. So that way I can attach them in sort of an artistic manner that looks good from bodice to skirt. But I really like these. They're like full of glitter. <laughs> glitter leaves. <laughs> Who doesn't like glitter leaves? Plus it's cool because the glitter is actually really stuck to them and I didn't have to add it. Though I do have glitter in my tutu, so fear not friend, there was a glitter explosion. A desolate landscape of glitter, and on the horizon, a sewing machine. So I'm going to do a headpiece with more of these cool leaves on it, and I'm very excited to add these leaves to everything. I don't know if you guys know, but like fake foliage is kind of a thing for me, like I just, I really like nature stuff, so yeah. I'm pinning some leaves onto the skirt just to kind of get an idea and get myself motivated for the next part of the project. If you'd like to see the leaves put on in their final artistic form, make sure you come back. I will still be making the bodice and the headpiece and embellishing the whole thing. And then I will have a Gale costume. much for joining me in making this 1890s ballet tutu. Now if you want to see the rest of this adventure of this project make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so that way you'll be notified when I put out the videos of making the bodice and the headpiece and when I do the final reveal of the costume model. It'll be on me because I made it to fit me. And in the description, you can find all the rest of our 1890s Frozen costume buddies. So you can see all of their amazing costumes too. Everyone's been doing an awesome job. It's like, it's so cool. So check them out too and come back for my other videos. And make sure you find me on the social medias. I'm Daisy Victoria everywhere. You can also visit my website, daisyvictoria.com, and I have a Patreon if you'd like to help support some of the creation of videos and projects and such. That would be much appreciated as well. And I hope you guys have a super magical day. I was going to say super frozen day, but <laughs> hopefully your day isn't frozen. But yeah. <laughs> Have a magical day and I'll see you again when I make the bodice. Bye bye!